The second session has to do with features of normal distribution. Features of normal distribution. So in this session, I will be explaining the major components or the properties of the normal distribution. Okay. These are the objectives for this session. By the end of the session, you should be able to describe the major features of the normal distribution and the normal curve. To start with, these are the major features of the normal distribution. We have the normal curve is bell-shaped. The normal curve is bell-shaped. Looking at the picture at our right, we can see a bell. That is the bell we know already. The bell used by schools in Ghana. I mean, the bell we ring to inform students that it's time for break. It's time to start their lessons. This same bell is used by traders. And we are saying that the normal curve has the shape of the bell. You can see it moves like the bell. It is curved in accordance to the shape of the bell. So that's why we say it is having a bell shape. The second feature, the second major property of the normal distribution is that it is unimodal. It is unimodal. Uni means one. And we've learned mode as one of the measures we um computes or estimates when we are dealing with the central tendencies. That is the, the number which appears the most. So with the normal curve, we are saying that it always presents one mode. That's why we call it unimodal distribution. Or we always say it is having a single mode. The third major feature of the normal distribution is that it is symmetrical about the mean. It is symmetrical about the mean. And I've already explained that the mean always lies in the middle. When we are considering normal distribution, be it the normal distribution or the standard normal distribution, the value that lies in the middle is the mean. And I'm saying that it is symmetrical about the mean, meaning that when we divide the normal distribution curve into two equal halves, both halves will be the same. Both parts will have the same size. So when the normal curve is divided into two, we will have two equal halves. That is what is meant by symmetrical. The fourth is asymptotic to the horizontal axis. Asymptotic to the horizontal axis. When we say that the normal distribution is asymptotic, it means that the curve declines towards the, vertic the horizontal axis. So you can see the curve declines. It moves downwards towards the horizontal axis. But it never touches the horizontal axis. So you can see there's a space in between the arrow, I mean the horizontal axis and the curve declining downwards. That's how we draw the normal curve. So if you draw your curve to touch, then I beg it's not a normal curve. So the asymptotic nature means that anytime you draw a normal curve, we will see the bell shaped moving towards the horizontal line yet it never touches the horizontal line okay i'm moving to the next slide features of the normal distribution continued we are still on the features of the normal distribution the fifth feature is that the total area under the curve is 1.0 that is one the total area under the curve is one thus the normal curve is always known as the unit normal curve. The total area under the curve is one. The space we can cover under the curve is one. You remember I said it is symmetrical. And if it is symmetrical and the, the area we can cover under it is one, then that means we have the, um, the other size to be halves. So we can, we can either write one over two or 0 0.5. 
meaning that with each side we have exactly 0 0.5 because each side is equal remember i said that because it is symmetrical so each side is half it's exactly half and we've I've also said that the total area under the curve is one the total area is one let's take note of this we will use this in our applications i mean when we are doing application of the normal curve so let's take note of that the area has to do with the space we have to cover under the cave so the space under the cave that is the area is one and when we take one side it's just 0 0.5 or one uh, one over two because it is symmetrical the c's feature is that the mean the mode and the median are all equal i remember i said this the mean the median the mode are all equal meaning they are all zero because the mean is zero only that because it is symmetrical because it is normal i mean because the distribution is normal you remember i said when you are dealing with a distribution which is normal in your reports we expect that you report the mean and not the other measures so here i've been using the mean the mean the mean but not the others because the distribution is normal but still, you must note that despite the fact that we are using only the mean, the mode and the median are also the same as the mean. So they are all hot. When we are dealing with the standard normal curve, they are all zero. But when it's just the normal curve, when we are using any other mean, that one, whatever mean you choose, will be the same as the median and the mode. Let's take note. The seventh feature is that there are infinite normal distribution curves there are infinite normal distribution curves so if the distribution you are dealing with the normal distribution you are dealing with is not standardized meaning you may have a number of normal distribution curves as i've explained earlier because when it is not standardized you may have different means and different standard deviations and if you have different means and different standard deviations, they will present different normal distribution curves. Let's take note of that. Each distribution is identified by the value of the mean and the standard deviation. However, when the values are converted to a standardized Z, that is the standard normal distribution curve, there is only one standard normal curve. Please, let's take note of this. I'm moving to the next slide. Using symbols, you know, in statistics, I always say we do with symbols, but our symbols are always fixed. Anytime you see a symbol in statistics, you always see it with the same meaning, unlike the other disciplines. So here, a variable which is distributed normally has the symbol. We have X, and we know X to be what? The raw scores distributed over N. N has to also, N also means the sample size. But mostly when we are dealing with um, a larger sample size or more sample sizes, we use the capital N. And this N comprise of the mean and the variance. And because we are dealing with the N for the larger group, I mean the population, that's why we can see this symbol. This you like symbol. It's also mean, but it's a mean we use for the population. So it's the population mean. We already know of this mean, the x bar. This is not the x bar. I couldn't draw it, so let me draw it again. The x bar. The x bar. The mean which appears like an x but with a bar. I'm not talking about that one. That is used for the sample when we are dealing with a subgroup when we are dealing with a subgroup but here this mean the you like mean is for the population so let's take notes the you like mean is for the population where you like mean like how i i always say the mean which appears like a u but with an extension of um the bus is the mean and the q tend square which is our variance the symbol for our variance for the population 
is the variance. For example, the scores x is given x in a given entrance examination have a mean of 54 and a variance of 16. Let's take note. So, meaning we have our mean and our variance. We have our mean and our variance. For example, the scores x in a given entrance exams have a mean of 54 and a variance of 16. This will be written in symbolic form as x distributed over n into brackets, 54, which is our mean and the variance, which is our which is 16, sorry, 16, which is our variance. A standard normal, normally distributed variance is written in symbolic form as when it is standardized. Remember I said the mean is always zero. So here, when we are writing in a symbolic form, we have x distributed over the variable um, in symbolic form, which is our mean to be zero, and we have our variance to be one because the variance and the standard deviation are all one when it is standardized, like I said earlier. So the variance becomes one. So this is how we write it in symbolic form. Okay, I'm moving to the next slide. The next slide has to do with the session review. So in this session, this is the second end of the second session of the unit five. You have learned about the features or the properties or the characteristics of the normal distribution and the normal curve. The normal distribution and the normal curve are bell-shaped. I remember I explained this. The fact that the shape appears like the kind of bell we use in our schools and even for trading in Africa. And I said it is symmetrical. Remember I said symmetrical means when you divide it into two, equal, into two halves, you have equal sizes or equal parts, the two parts will be equal, and they all move from the mean, so they are about the mean, when you are dividing from the mean, and have the mean, the median, and the mode to be equal, the median, the mode, and the mean are equal, this is the end of the first session, so let's move to the, the third session,